That's right. It is time to go inside the matchup. First up on our list, it's the Carolina Panthers at two and six, taking on the four and four Bengals. The Bengals are seven point favorites in this matchup with a 42 and a half point over under last week. We saw the Cincinnati Bengals play on Monday night football. Actually, just a few days ago, uh, we just saw the Bengals play on Monday night football and it did not look good. Aaron, you and I were doing the recaps for this game. AJ, you were not there. So I'm going to go to you first here on the Bengals side of things. Uh, what's what's the fix to, to the Bengals here? Is it, a, is it a simple fix to to bounce back from, from Monday's matchup? Simple? No. I mean, uh, they have the talent. They have to put it together, but they're doing it against a defense who not – some might say overperformed, but is playing to what we thought they would be. This Carolina defense is pretty good. Uh, they know how to get after the quarterback, and you talked about trades that didn't happen, and a lot of, a lot of swirl was around Brian Burns, and they definitely did not let him go. He is going to be there ready to rush the quarterback. So this line has to hold up better than it did against uh, Miles Garrett, and they didn't even have all their – all their guys rushing the quarterback and it wasn't able to do it. So um, you need some help. You need some help blocking. Joe Mixon's not the not a blocking guy, but at the same time, if you're going to keep him in there, he's got to be able to hold his own or at least be a good release valve for him, which is something he'd been good in the uh, previous weeks before and wasn't so much against the Browns. So easy fix, no. Fixable, absolutely. This is a very talented offense, and uh, I think Joe Burrow knows what he needs to do to get it together. Last week, Joe Burrow sacked five times. Another just tough week uh, for Burrow and the offensive line uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, Aaron, on the Panthers' side of things, P.J. Walker remains the quarterback. Had a great week last week against the against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, helped them at least push to overtime. Uh, some big plays uh, on the back of D.J. Moore as well. What's your assessment of P.J. <laughs> Walker through the few games that he's had uh, started for the Panthers? Oh, timing. Oh, he's, he's PJ Walker. Um, he's, okay, yeah. he's PJ Walker. He, he's a backup quarterback in the NFL. I, we, we, we want backup quarterbacks to be better than they are, but there's a reason why you're in the NFL and you've bounced around and you've gone place after place after place, and you're still the same type of quarterback. Can you come in and have some success sometimes? Sure, why not? But for the most part, that's not the way it works. For the most part, you're going to be stuck being a backup quarterback. And that's what he is. He's just their best option because they have a team full of backup quarterback. <laughs> he's played. Okay. He's not, not, he's not the best, but he's not the worst quarterback that you can stick out there and expect to try to get something done. But let's be honest. I don't think anybody in Carolina really thinks that Carolina is going to do something. We can talk about they're trying hard and they're, they're still want to win games. All those things are true, but there are still realistic expectations as coaches, as players in the NFL, when they look at their roster and they look at their team and they go into each Sunday and say, this is what we are trying to do. They know they're not Super Bowl contenders, but they want to do what they can to see what kind of young talent they have, what they want to do to, to get their next contract if you're a player. Um, and that's okay. It's okay to be realistic. And P.J. Walker is just a realistic backup option that is the best for them right now. Um, I don't expect more. I don't expect less. I expect P.J. Walker to be P.J. Walker. So um, the numbers that he's put up, the way he's looked, the inconsistency um, – that he has, that's what he's going to be because that's the type of player that he is. It's not going to change um, all of a sudden now uh, four or five years into the league, knowing that he's came in as a backup. He is a backup. It wasn't drafted to be anything other than a backup, or I don't even think he was drafted. I think he was a nah. free agent, but uh, XFL, XFL stuff. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> so you knew what you were doing when you go get PJ Walker, you're not looking for, your next star quarterback. You're looking for somebody to come in and fill in and, and play well when you have an injury. And I think he's done that, uh, but he is limited. He is limited. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, he, he, he can't write back if they never wrote about him in the first place. I know we talked about, you know, Smith writing back, but oh they never God. wrote about he him. Let so writing back thing go. That wasn't, I, why do people like that so much? It wasn't that great. It was pretty great. People like the Broncos country. Yeah, let's it. ride. Okay. People, yeah, will get, right. <laughs> people will get attached to anything. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's where we're at in, in today's society. Uh, this game though, I think is going to be a bounce back game for the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals after a tough uh, week last week. Um, I am very interested to see that pass rush of Carolina uh, get to Joe Burrow and see how they protect Joe Burrow. Uh, and the, it's, it's clear and there's a clear connection when Joe Burrow is not sacked uh, five or five or more times that he does well. Um, and when he doesn't, when he gets sacked five or more times, it's, it's bad. It's bad news for the Bengals. 
Um, but in this game, I don't see that happening. And I personally will start my, with the, my prediction, 31-17 uh, Bengals here. Gentlemen, Aaron, what you got? Yeah, I almost want to change my pick um, because I have a sneaky suspicion, suspicion that this game is going to be a lot closer. Um, I, I will tell you when I made my picks yesterday, you were like, I need your picks. I just picked, I just started sending them to you because uh, you said you need them tonight and I didn't want to forget. And I just was like, shit, let me just send them. Uh, but I am going to take the Bengals <laughs> in this one. I will take the Bengals 33-17. What do you just put my pick up there? I told you once I start talking, put my pick up there. Anyways, 33-17, <laughs> I'll take the Bengals. But um, you talked about Joe Burrow getting right. This is what Joe Burrow has to learn. The, the deep ball's not there with Jamar Chase anymore. They can't force the ball down the field. The defenses are forcing them to check down more, and he has to be willing to take those check downs. Last week, it was check down, check down, check down to Joe Mixon or getting sacked. And when the Bengals do that, they get impatient, and they start trying to force stuff, and that's when the turnovers and the sacks happen. Um, I'm not putting all of these sacks on, on the offensive line. A lot of those are Joe Burrow wanting to force the ball down the field and holding on to it too long. Um, I get it when it's nobody blocks Miles Garrett and he gets after him in the half, second and a half. But some of those, it's just Joe Burrow holding the ball and not looking at his his initial primary and secondary reads because he wants to push the ball down the field. Um, so I have some concerns there, but I think the Bengals are a better football team. I will take them 33-17, but that score is probably not what it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot closer than that. Yeah, it's probably going to be something like the Bengals 31 to 24. That seems right in the area of where it should be. Uh, the the Panthers have been scoring a little bit more. The offense actually looks like something uh, that's not just CMC with PJ Walker. Uh, DJ Moore's kind of got back to resurgence. I imagine that uh, Deontay Foreman is not going to have another 150 plus game, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that he does. Uh, and I think Chuba Hubbard coming back is going to help that running game as well. So uh, I think they can score, but I, I do believe that. Uh, you make a good point about him having to take what's there because that's what's going to open up the long ball. And you can force long ball to Jamar Chase. Tyler Boyd either needs busted coverage or for them to kind of forget about him because they're focused on a couple other things. And if you take those check downs, if you take those easy across uh, the middle field shots to T. Higgins and your big body receivers, Tyler Boyd can get open, get loose downfield. And I think you see that happen a few times this game. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals 31 24. 